In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this standards table so that you can better evaluate your athletes. Some of the features of this table are you are going to be able to select any test from your database and it will automatically update all of your standards. As well, you can select um, the decimals that you would like to round this data to. This is going to be a really powerful trick if you are doing any sort of training groups or other things where you need to calculate different groups with your data. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back and to get started here, all I've gone ahead and done is just created a data set here on the left hand side. So basically what we have in this data set is we have the athlete name, date, and then a selection of tests that we might be testing. And this would work with basically any tests um, that we would wanna look at. And so as you can see, we have basically about 50 odd um, values in these tests, just going from 2022-0101 all the way to 2022-0130. All the data is made up, so it doesn't really reflect um, any of the actual standards when we put it into our table here, but um, it was just created for the purposes of this video. And then secondly, what I've gone ahead and done is just copied a picture of a normal distribution graph here, because what we're going to be doing is for our categories here, we're going to be using um, the average for those tests and standard deviations. So what a standard deviation is, is if you can see this curve and imagine that everything under that curve is this data here um, from our testing data. Now in reality, it's not going to be completely distributed like this. We may have um, curves where all of the data is at the, the end or curves where it's all at um, the other side. But if we can imagine here, if we are within one standard deviation of our average, which is our mean, we're going to capture about 68% of um, the athletes that we've tested. And the good way, the good thing about doing it this way is that as we our athletes get better, um, these numbers are actually going to change a little bit so that we're always going to be reflecting um, the values from our team. And we can put filters on them so we only want to use this year or many years or whatever. But when I'm creating these standards, basically what I have is my average is just the average for that value. And then below average would be minus one standard deviation. So we're looking at basically these, this value here, the next 13 and a half percent or so. Above average is plus one standard deviation. Poor would be minus two standard deviations. So we're just trying to capture that last three and a half percent or so. Um, which are the ones that would really be lagging behind in this quality. And then great would be um, plus two standard deviations, which is that three and a half percent on the other side. So it's basically the top three and a half percent or so of our athletes. Um, and that's basically how we would categorize it. So again, we have average plus or minus one and then plus or minus two. And I mean, you can play around with these values. You could do one and a half standard deviations down or half and then one and a half, however you wanted to work it. And the process would remain basically the same. So play around with it and then you could change it based on your values. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So let's get going on this here. So I have one, two, three, four, five tests. So I'm going to create five boxes where we can select those tests. So to do that, what I'll do is I'll just select five cells and I'm gonna just do a quick data validation. So we'll go data, data validation, and list from range, I will select those tests and hit OK. And all I'm doing there is just creating a quick drop down box. Whenever we want to start to use um, formulas that pull um, different values, it's good to use drop down boxes and data validations because that way we're ensuring that everything is spelled the right way and everything um, basically just works. So then the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually um, find the average of um, the value that we select. Now we could easily, if we wanted this to be static, I could just do something like this equals average and then just select all that data and that would work and that would give me the average, but I'm gonna do it so that it's dynamic and you can change the tests at any time. So the first thing that I wanna do is based on this um, value right here, the bench press, I actually wanna filter out all of that data. So what I'll do, is I'll type equals filter 
and I'm going to use an index and match to actually pick the value that I want to filter out. So what this is going to look like, filter is going to ask me what the range is that I want. I'm going to say index and I'm going to open this up and it's going to ask me for my reference. In this case, the reference is going to be all of my data. So basically from A2 all the way down to G. So it's just going to select all of this and that's be where I store my data and then comma. It's going to ask me what row I want to select and I want all of the rows. So I'll leave this blank and then it's going to ask me what column I want. And what we're going to do is go along the top here and search for the name that we've selected and then select that column. So how that works is I'll type match, open this up and I'll open this formula box back up so you can see it's going to ask me what my search key is. Well, that is the value that I've selected comma, it's going to ask me what my range is. Again, that's going to be um, just this top um, column here because it's looking through the range. So it's going to look through um, A1, A, or B1, C1, D1, E1, F1, G1, etc. And then for the match type, we'll type false, close it off, close it off, and then comma, when do we want to select these values? Well, we want to select them when everything in this is not equal to blank and then comma and I hit enter and what you're going to see is it's basically going to return all of my bench press values. Okay, so that's an easy way to return all the values. Now if I want to find the average, all I have to do is take this filter formula and type average in front of it. And then put brackets around the whole thing and hit enter and that is my average value. Okay, so that's an easy way to do that. We're gonna use this a lot. So I'm just gonna lock a couple of things in place here. Number one that I'm gonna lock is just the data. So I'm gonna just type in F4 here to lock that. And we know that it's locked because it's put dollar signs around everything. I'm gonna lock in this top here because I don't want that to change. And I'll do the same thing in my actual filter. Hit enter. Um, it's gonna ask me to autofill. And sure, we can go ahead and autofill. Now, the next two things that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a place where I can actually calculate my STDEV and my rounding. So for standard deviation, the formula looks like this. Um, the one thing I'm going to do is just copy this index match formula because that's going to be all of my values. And I'm going to type in equals STDEV dot P. So what that means is it's going to treat all of these values um, as the population, okay? And whenever we're using athlete data, we, we usually want to use stdev.p because all of the values that we've taken in are the entire population. There's no need to basically fill in the gaps and try to normalize out the data. So basically what it asked me for is value one, value two, et cetera. So what I can do is just paste in that formula that we have that pulls out all of the values, close it off, and right away, that's gonna give me my standard deviation for um, squats, or sorry, for bench press, and if I change that to squat, you can see that it changes because I've made everything um, dynamic, okay? So, if we remember, this is minus one, this is minus two, and this is going to be one, and two plus. So what we can do here is I can just take this average value. So under below average, I'll type equals this cell here and then um, minus the standard deviation. And I'll hit enter and then I'll uh, basically fill that all the way down. And then, sorry, this should be minus two. And then what I'll do here is go equals the average minus bracket two times the standard deviation bracket hit enter and then fill that down and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side except for I'm going to add them so it'll be equals average plus standard deviation close that off and then on the other side will be equals average plus bracket two times standard deviation, close it off, hit enter. 
and right away now we have all of our different uh, values but as you can see these are pretty big numbers now what we could do is I could easily just change the decimals up here down to numbers that make a lot of sense but I like to make things as dynamic as possible so I'm going to create a drop down box here to actually select my rounding so what this is going to look like I'll select these five cells here data data validation and I'm going to select list of items so now I can enter in things that are comma separated so the first one is maybe I want to round it to the nearest whole number so I'll type in one then maybe I want to round it to the nearest 0 0.5 then 0 0.1 0 0.05 0 0.01 and for me that should pretty much cover all of the different things that I would want to round to I'll hit save and now I can select those values here. So for now, what I'm going to do is actually take this formula and at the beginning of it, I'll type in M round and it's going to ask me the value. Well, the value is that formula that we've already done. If I go to the end and hit comma, it's going to ask me what the factor I want to round it to is. And for that, we're just going to select our drop down menu, hit close the brackets, and you can see now this has rounded it to the nearest. Um, whole number. Now it's giving me all those extra um, decimals because I was playing around with them up here. So if I just go and close that down, um, it'll take those away. But let's do that to each of our formulas. M round, um, comma, pick our rounding factor. We'll do it to the um, below average. Sorry, that was our standard deviation. I don't want to do that one. That's my mistake. I just want to do poor, below average, etc. M round, comma, rounding, and then we'll do average, M round, comma, rounding, and then we'll do above average, M round, comma, rounding. And then the last one is great. And that is M round, comma, um, rounding. There we go. So now as we change this, we can see that our values all change to reflect that rounding. So that's a really powerful trick because not all of our tests are um, measured in the same decimal places. So from there, all I have to do is take these, drag them down because of the way we've got everything set up and automatically all of these values will be rounded. So, I mean, a, a chart like this now allows me to categorize my athletes. So for example, athlete one of a bench press of 149, if we go to our bench press, um, athlete one sits somewhere between below average and average for their bench press. So that might be something that we want to work on with them. For squat, you can see um, a value of 100 for squat, I mean, that's somewhere between below poor. So that's probably one of the lower squats in our data set. Counter movement jump, 34. So you can see in this particular case, this athlete's somewhere between average and above average, etc. So this is just a quick and easy way to start to classify out your athletes and see where they excel and where they f um, trail so that you know where to focus their training. So I hope this trick helps you out. And if it does, Please like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with someone you think would find value in it and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.